All right, pre-calculus friends, we are going to continue chapter three. There's four more sections to do. Um, so the first one we're going to talk about continuity and in behavior. So we're still talking about graphs here. Uh, most of the ones we've studied so far have been smooth, continuous curves, um, but some can be discontinuous, meaning you need to pick up your pencil to trace it, just like we did with piecewise functions. Those are an example of discontinuous graphs. Um, so there's four types of discontinuity. Infinite discontinuity, which means the absolute value of the function, y, becomes greater and greater as the graph approaches a given value of x. So an example of those are rational functions. Rational meaning fractions. Um, there's often asymptotes involved in those. And they usually look something like this. So if you think about it, as your value of y is increasing, your value of x is also increasing everywhere on that graph. Um, but it's not one continuous line because you need to pick up your pencil to graph it. Jump discontinuity um, is the graph stops at a given value in the domain and then begins at a different value in the range um, for the same value of the domain. So an example here would be like the piecewise functions we saw. So for example, something like this. Okay, so you had to pick up your pencil to draw that. Um, it's continuous um, to the left of zero, and then at zero it jumps to a new point and is continuous after zero, but it's discontinuous in between. And then we have point discontinuity. Um, where there is an x value in the domain for which the function is undefined. So that often looks like um, any type of continuous function where there is a gap. So there's just maybe one point on that line where that function is not defined. And then everywhere discontinu discontinuous is um, functions that are impossible to graph on the real number system. So if you had... Um, like you have written on your paper, f of x is 1 when x is rational, and negative 1 when x is irrational. So we can't graph um, irrational numbers on a real number system, so that is everywhere discontinuous. If a function is not discontinuous, then it is continuous. Uh, linear and quadratic functions are continuous at all points, so parabolas and lines, uh, cubic functions. Um, a function, the, def, the formal definition of continuous is a, is a function is continuous at a number c if there is a point on the graph where the x-coordinate c um, and the graph pass through the point without a break. Um, so what this looks like, if we have here, let's say we have an axis system, x and y, and let's say we have a line here. So this line is continuous. If we pick a value for c here, so somewhere on the x-axis, we pick c, and then we find out what's the y value at that point. At this point, this is f of c, or the y value at that point. If f of c exists, and for every c in the domain, then the function is continuous. So there's a continuity test that um, you need to pass three different criteria. A function is continuous at um, x equals c if it satisfies the following condition. One, the function is defined at c and f of c exists. So we pick a point c, plug it into the function. If we get out a whole number, or a number, um, then the function exists at that point. The second condition is the function approaches the same y value on the left and right sides of c. So let's say I'm um, on, on this line and I'm coming from the right to c. All my y values are approaching c from the right, and they're approaching c from the left. And we'll see how to, how to determine this in a minute. And then the last thing is, the y value of that function approaches um, from each side of f of c. So the x value approaches from the left and the right, and the y value approaches from the left and the right. So here's an example. Determine whether each function is continuous at a given x value. So we have this um, parabola in, in part a here, 3x squared plus 7, and we want to know for the x value of 1, is it continuous? So we're going to test three conditions. First, we're going to say, is it defined at x equals 1? 
is it defined at x equals 1? So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, what is f of 1? f of 1 is 3 times 1 squared plus 7. Uh, 1 squared is 1, 3 plus 7 is 10. So for the x value of 1, there is a y value of 10, so it passes the first part of that test. The second part of the test is to approach it from approach x from the left and right. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a table, two tables of values here and test some points. So I'm going to say here and here, x, f of x, x, f of x. I'm going to approach x from the left and from the right. On the left of 1, so x is 1, this is the number I'm approaching from left and right. If I'm a little bit less than 1 or to the left of 1, I would be 0 0.9 or 0 0.99, and getting even closer, 0 0.999, and so on. If I plug 0 0.9 into the function at x, I'm going to get 9.43. If I plug in 0.99, I'm going to get 9.9403. If I plug in 0.999, I'm going to get 9.99403. So as I'm getting closer and closer to 1 on the left, as these numbers get um, closer and closer to 1, these numbers get closer and closer to 10. So my x value from the left is approaching my y value 10. Same thing from the right. I'm going to go um, from the right of 1. So I'm going to do a little bit more than 1. 1.1, 1 .1, getting a little bit closer, 1.01, 1.001. .01, 1 .001. Plugging these in, I'm going to get 10.63, 10.06003, 10 10.006003. So as this number gets closer to 1, this number gets closer to 10. So I can check off number 2, that from the x from the left and the right is approaching the same value. Number 3 then is to um, examine y from both sides, y from left and right. And I can do that in a couple of ways. I can do it. Um, I can do it on the graph. If I look at the graph of this function, so this is going to be a very rough sketch here. Um, but this is a graph that's up seven, and it's a positive parabola with a stretch of three. Um, and what you can do, if you, we can look at this on the calculator in class tomorrow. When I'm approaching this value of ten from the left and the right, from the left and the right. Um, it's it's approaching uh, 10 from both from both sides, um, where where f of 1 equals 10. So this graph is indeed continuous. Let's look at uh, part B. Part B wants to know is x minus 2 over x squared minus 4 continuous at x equals 2. So step one is to plug in that value. 2 minus 2, so this is f of 2, sorry, 2 minus 2 over 2 squared minus 4. That's 2 minus 2 over 4 minus 4, which I have 0 on the top and 0 on the bottom. So you have to ask yourself, when I have a fraction, can my bottom ever be 0? And the answer is no. So therefore, this function is discontinuous at x equals 2. So at x equals 2 it can exist because it's undefined. Um, so once the function fails one part of the continuity test you can stop right there and, um, and know that it's discontinuous. So uh, you can try these next two on your own, part A and part B. Um, see if you can figure out which one is continuous and do all three parts of the test. All right, a function is continuous on an interval if and only if it is continuous at each number x in the interval. It may be discontinuous at other intervals throughout the graph. For example, the following piecewise function is continuous on the interval for x less than or equal to 2. So going back to our brilliant knowledge of piecewise functions, if I were to graph this from negative 2 x is at 1, a y value of 1. Between negative 2 and positive 3, 
Um, I am the line with a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of 1. Here, and I have a closed circle here and an open circle here. So this is a rough sketch. Something like that. It should be a straight line. And then um, at x equals 3, I am the graph of 2x. So that's a slope of 2, something up here. Uh, so again, rough sketch, uh, not very accurate, but you get the idea. I have a discontinuous function, but parts of it are continuous. So this function here is continuous. Um, this whole line is going to be continuous. It's continuous in that interval, and it's in continuous beyond 3. So you might say something like, this function is continuous um, for x less than or equal to negative 2 between negative 2 x and 3 and when x is greater than 3. Um, so taking these values here we can figure out where the pieces of the graph are continuous. Okay the last thing we want to do um, is talk about end behavior. End behavior is another way to analyze the behavior of a function so it describes what the y values do as the absolute value of x gets greater and greater. Or what that saying is, as x approaches infin infinity, what is y doing? Um, so one way we can figure this out is by making, again, a table of values. Um, so we're looking at, as we approach infinity and negative infinity in x, what's going to happen to y? So we're going to start in the middle with 0, and then we're just going to kind of increase values. So as I go to negative infinity, these numbers are just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Obviously, I'm not going to plug in really large numbers, but I'm just going to see what's happening in these small intervals. And then as I go to positive infinity, so bigger and bigger numbers in the positive direction. I'm just going to plug these into the function and see what I get out. So this is going to be negative... Um, 200 million, this is going to be negative 2 million, <laughs> sorry, counting my zeros here, 2 million, this is going to be negative 2,000, 0, positive 2,000, positive 2 million, and positive 200 million. So again, just plugging in these large, large values for x into the function and seeing what we get out for y. So as x is going to negative infinity here, notice y is also getting larger and larger and larger in the direction of negative infinity. As x is going to positive infinity, notice y is getting larger and larger and larger in the positive infinity direction. This isn't always going to match up like it does right now, um, so we always have to be on the lookout for what's happening. So we can say something like, as x approaches infinity, f of x also approaches positive infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, f of x also approaches negative infinity. So we're going to stop right there, and then tomorrow in class we're going to look at um, how we can recognize um, some of this end behavior just by looking at the equations of functions, and we'll do a little bit of calculator work in class tomorrow. Alright, have a good night, and I will see you tomorrow.